with the Orions made and the pieces on the board, conflict was inevitable. The Tambralingas themselves posed only a token threat, but they had the support of the immense naval empire of Srivijaya. The prowess of the Srivijayan navy was unmatched, but their coalition was at its tactical disadvantage. The Khmer forces threatened the enemy by land from the north and by sea from the east, while the Cholas struck out from the west. The enemy found themselves surrounded on all sides. Suryavarman sent word to the Chola force to establish a foothold on the Murray Peninsula. Taking the initiative, he ordered the outfitting of a massive navy to challenge the Srivijayans and Tambralingas for maritime supremacy. Everything hinged on the success of the Chola force that had landed on the mainland. If they could present a formidable enough threat and occupy the enemy land forces, Suryavarman would be able to wrest control of the water and launch a devastating amphibious invasion. If the Cholas were driven from their foothold, the Khmer would be forced to face down their opponents alone, a prospect with which Suryavarman would not be particularly excited. Our Chola allies have established a foothold on Tangralinga lands. It must be held at all costs. Martin.
เอ้สู้สุดได้เนี่ยซังซองเนี่ยซังซอง
banyak ciri-ciri. Oh, my God. 
the Shriva Jailan Thanasocracy is no match for the Khmerchola Alliance. Storms raged as wooden vessels rammed into each other. A deafening sound prefaced by the bristling of projectiles through the air. Thousands of men sank below the angry waves, never to rise again. The Chola land force fought bravery, holding to the rest. Just as it seemed that they were consigned to defeat the hands of the Tumberlinga Srivijaya force, salvation arrived in the form of swarms of Khmer. Victory has a glorious taste. Over the course of a single conflict, the influence and power of the empire were raised to unprecedented levels. <laughs>